Hey guys, welcome to a Windows 11 video. In today's video, we're gonna showcase a giant privacy bug found in the operating system. Now, while I say privacy, this is technically also a security flaw, so keep this in mind, and I'll go over specifically what you have to look for if you're on a domain infrastructure versus a work group infrastructure. If you're a home user and you don't know the difference, domain infrastructure is generally business, non-business, or home-based is work group. So we will touch base on both of those issues, as well as how you can manually make the changes or if you're advanced enough, use the registry to make the changes. Now, if you're new to the channel, keep in mind that this is a disclosure video that was created as the bug was found by creating the GTS Unsuck Windows 11 package. And I would tell you to check out that package and that playlist if you want more information on it. But let's jump into this issue. We're gonna start off with a work group version of this issue. To replicate the issue, what you're gonna have to do is click on Start and choose Settings. You'll note that all of the little icons in here for pinned icons are not showing up. The reason why is because the system has never been on the internet and as a result has not downloaded anything yet. However, even with all the updates on 25H2, this still exists. It actually was reported in 22H2 and never fixed. So let's click on Settings. Once your settings opens, choose Privacy and Security. And then any one of these will work, but we're gonna use camera just as a reference point. Once you have camera open, you're gonna see that these are the settings that are the default. So by default, out of the box windows, this is what you should have as your default settings. Now, if you're like me or really anybody else out there, you would think if you slide the off button off, which shuts all of this other stuff off, it would change the registry configuration and actually change the settings on the system to block camera or camera access. However, in doing that, I discovered the bug. See, if I change a submenu, it does actually work. So it modifies registry configuration if I change a submenu, right? So if I change this, it'll modify the registry. However, if I change the main slide, which turns all of this off, it doesn't make any system changes whatsoever. Let's take a look at that together. Now to check this on your own system, it's pretty easy. What you'll have to do is you'll right click on start and choose run. And you're gonna type in regedit. It's R-E-G-E-D-I-T and then hit enter. You'll get a UAC prompt. Say yes and continue. Let's follow the path together. We're gonna choose H key current user. Once we're under H key current user, we're gonna to go to software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, capability access management. We're gonna choose consent store and then locate webcam. Now webcam is the direct registry configuration for camera. And you're gonna notice the value listed here as allow. Allow is the default value for the on in the camera access. So you would think if we choose off, which you'll see shuts everything else off in here, this would cause the webcam configuration under refresh to change the value to deny. But you'll note we could hit refresh 15 million times and it doesn't make any difference. Now, if we go back up here and we choose on, you'll see everything slides back on. So if I go into webcam, at minimum, you would think maybe the timestamp would change or the value for allow, and it does not. However, and this is how we are able to confirm this is actually a bug. If I choose the let apps access your camera submenu and choose off and go over here and now do refresh, we're gonna see the deny, meaning that the value changed. We can see the timestamp change and the deny because we now turn this off. If we go in here again and turn it back on, and I go back in here and I do refresh, we're gonna see allow, which means that this is now on. Now, if I go back up again and choose off, which turns this off, and I go back in here and I do view and refresh, it stays as allow even though it's off, meaning that this upper slide doesn't work. It's not actually connected to anything. In addition, I've confirmed that it doesn't work in any of them. It's not just here in camera, but location services, AI services, all of that stuff. If you have the top one clicked off, but you don't change the submenu processes, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't change the value from allow to deny or deny to allow, meaning that the system still has full access. 
you no longer get the notifications, but the system in the back end is still allowing Microsoft to access your data, or for that matter, any third party application that needs access, meaning that you're not actually disabling anything. Now, just to confirm, this has already been reported to Microsoft in 22H2, which was three years ago. So why isn't it fixed? I have a theory on that. My theory is, is that it's not fixed because there's a lot of money in your data. And if you shut that off, that means that that free operating system they gave you called Windows 11 cost them more money. So why give you the ability to turn it off? Now, here's the thing, is once you connect to the internet, this consent store listing here is going to get a lot longer. There's gonna be a lot more applications that are gonna download and install on your system. They're gonna be the applications that fill in the dots that we can't see here under the pinned applications area inside of the start menu. That will fill this up. Each one of these will create a submenu. These submenus are the app X packages. So realistically, if we did a remove app X package and we put in the name of this actual key, it would allow us to uninstall it. However, we could just deny access to everything without using the GUI. And to do that is relatively straightforward. For instance, if we wanna shut off microphone access for the Microsoft Office Hub, we could double click on this value and then use a capital and type in deny and hit OK or hit enter on your keyboard. And that'll change the value to deny. Now, once you reboot the system, that deny value will actually show up correctly as one of these sub menus inside of the privacy and security. But you'll have to go through every single one of these and choose deny in every single sub menu, including the upper menu. So for instance, under our webcam area here, if we go back into our webcam configuration, we're gonna note that we have a value of allow, but we're gonna notice that if we go into microphone, we don't have that value of allow or deny. That's because it hasn't been created because in the microphone configuration, the deny or allow key itself does not exist. It just doesn't show up. And that further proves that this slider does absolutely nothing because it doesn't even exist in all of the subcontent or content store items. So what we'd have to do is actually create a reg underscore SZ, give it a value of deny. Basically like what we see here is value and then we would need to use the data as deny. You could alternatively create an actual script to do this, to go through all of these, which is something that I have already created inside of the package. And at one point or another, I will throw those on the website. So you'll have access to see specifically what values you have to change on every single one of these keys and what everything actually does to lock down the system. So that pretty well covers the work group configuration. Let's talk about group policy. I'm gonna use this machine. Now this is my machine that I use for my testing. So basically this is our GTS unsucking policy machine, which is created and on a domain. It does have domain policy on it, but the domain policy is configured in a way that gives me the ability to export it and create my sub configurations in the registry without it. Now, with that said, I'm gonna show you how this works. Now we already know that the camera configuration slider on the top is what doesn't work, that the submenu configurations is what you would actually need to change. Now, in the policy configuration, when you change your application privacy settings, what that's actually modifying is HQ local machine software policies, Microsoft Windows app privacy. It's a key that gets created with that group policy. Once you do that, depending on what you have defined is what accesses this side here. So let apps access email or uh, let apps access location. And you'll note that they're set to zero. Zero means off. If they were set to one, they'd be turned on. But all this does is it controls the top slider. And since the top slider does absolutely nothing, all you're doing is turning that off, but all the other garbage in the background is still running. Meaning that group policy doesn't work in Windows 11 25H2 if you're trying to actually control the security and privacy of the operating system. In order to correctly do this, you would need to create yourself a batch script, likely a logon script, and then point it to a .reg file and have that .reg file modify the HK current user configuration to deny, because if you don't, none of this stuff actually works. Since you're in here anyway, I figure, you know what, we should at least take a look at where the default location is for your ADMX and, uh, configurations on your Windows 11 system, which by default is gonna be your HK local machine, software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, sec edit, and then reg values. 
These values read from the SDB file, which is the database file that's created in your local security configuration for your database of group policy configuration. This is a different file than what is used for the app X package location, which is underneath the program data location and is read and at that point updates that other location for your registry settings based off of group policy. Whereas everything else in Windows still uses the default or the old sec edit location and we could see all of those policy setting configurations listed here. So guys, this concludes the video here. Uh, this pretty much covers everything you need to know as far as this bug is concerned that exists in the Windows 11 privacy and security um, configuration of both work group and group policy configs. Feel free to throw something down in the comments uh, if you guys happen to get an update that fixes this, also disclose that because this has existed since 22H2, which means three years now. And I, I just, I don't have much hope that it's going to be fixed. Quite frankly, privacy is a big concern in Windows 11. So that's why this video exists. If you think other people might need to know this information, feel free to download the video or share it or whatever you wanna do. This is not a money making channel, it's just designed for disclosure. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Thanks so much for watching.